everyone make some noise for 94.9. We can get this done today. By the way, my name's Doug. I do the afternoon show, and I also am uh, the program director. Bob's right back here. Say hi to Bob. Woo! Hi, Bob. Hi, Bob. Bob does middays. He's on from ten, uh, nine till two every day, and he's also the guy who's in charge of the music. So, when you know the songs you want to get done, just send it to Bob at the Rock FM. So Bob, where is this song? Just send Side A and Side B. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just right oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, before we get into the music, we'll talk to the guys for a little bit, and then we'll. Put a chance at for a couple questions from the audience in a bit, right? Is that cool? Woo! Okay. So I guess the first question is, uh, you guys, who's the oldest? I am. You were born in you were born in Canada. I was born in Toronto, yes. Yeah, okay. So you're born here in Toronto. Yeah. And the name Palais Royale is named after a uh, it's an old historical site, uh, which is still around in, in Parkdale. Yep. Yeah. Has significance to the band? It does yeah, where our grandparents met back in sixties, uh sixties and uh they came from Brazil and Scotland, and they met there dancing, and then that's why we're kind of here, I guess. We're in the world wars, but, yeah. yeah. Have you guys been to the actual We world? actually went up, and we were yeah. we were on, I think that was the first time we ever headlined in Canada, or, or in Toronto, we played the Sneaky D's, and that was like a year and a half ago. And we went up to um, the opera, or we went up to the opera, we went up to uh, Palerale, and the guy, this old guy comes out, and we told him the story, and he's like, one of the last bands I ever played there was the Stones, so we'd love to like have you guys come and do something here. And so we want to do live Palio, live from Palio. So we're yeah. trying to figure out we're like live DVD wow. for next year. Yeah, so I think we can help you with that. That'd be fantastic. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's what awesome. we need to do. We'll make it happen. I think the line is already started. When you guys have have been uh, putting your music together over the last little bit, you look around at each other, three brothers. What brings you inspiration to, uh, to to create your music? Other, like, I mean, you can't write about family squabbles. Um, or can you? Oh, we can, yeah. yeah. Uh, we beat the living <laughs> shit out of each other, so <laughs> it's all right. But um, now we're the past three years of our lives, we've been through so much. You know, like, we've almost died so many times. So. We played 600 gigs in three years, so we so haven't we're stopped we're touring. To be here, so we write about what we know. How so? Have you almost died? Uh, Cars we, catching yeah. on fire. The wheels falling off our bus. <laughs> we had we had we had a bus that didn't have shifter cables, so we had to go under it and put it in drive. And then we had to put his foot on the brake, and so it had to roll out before the bus would roll out. We did this for about like four months. What, and then, what part of the country were you? Um, we were driving. We were driving from no. We were going down the Rockies in Denver. Oh no! So, on two yeah. separate occasions, they almost got murdered by a crackhead. <laughs> <laughs> Just Which so random. Which one? That's good. Where did this this almost happen? Uh, Jacksonville, um, Florida. Jacksonville, Florida, and the other one happened uh, well, like three, three weeks, weeks ago Texas. in Amarillo, Amarillo Texas. Texas. Yeah. And someone literally with their car drove over a median to try to hit Remington. Like, just kept on driving. <laughs> and they got out of the car and started yelling at him. Because uh, if you wear pink pants in Amarillo, Texas, <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. I, I think they voted red down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Luckily, that, that I, jumped, totally. I jumped in front of a tree, so luckily the guy hit the tree instead of me. So wow. that, was, that was very scary. And then he went to his car to pull out a gun, so I just ran. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I had, to, I had to call the cops. I had to run to a Starbucks. Which was like, <laughs> <laughs> I, had to, I had to ran to the Starbucks. I'm like, someone call the police. Someone tried to kill me. And then we were in Jacksonville, and this Remington was riding around like a moped scooter around where the, our bus was. And this guy runs into the middle of the street and just pushes him off the bike. He's like, no. And so we're like, oh, all of the bike, all and, the then, and then he's like, if I see your face, I'm going to put a bullet in your skull. I was like... <laughs> so he, he comes back. I was freaking. And the crazy thing is, this is, like, both times, it's just, like, me without stage makeup. So I'm like, I'm not even that threatening. <laughs> like, I should, this we, should went, we, went, we went to go find the guy, and him and his three buddies were definitely on something. And uh, they, they, were, they also had a gun. They, they all pulled out guns, and were like... So then, do you mind talking about guns for a bit? Obviously, yeah. they're, they're, they're not a part of your culture, but they are, are a part sure? of <laughs> <laughs> How, uh, you've run in, you've been on the, the wrong end of a gun a couple times already. And yeah. How does that make you feel? Do you feel safe when you're on tour? Or like, you know, Absolutely not. Absolutely not. <laughs> and, uh, 
Guns is funny, like, it's it's our least scary thing that we face in the day. It's mostly bad drivers <laughs> that almost kill us and almost flip the bus. Um, but, I mean, it, it's weird because whenever we get into, like, a, like a near-death situation or something like that, you know, it's funny because all we want to do is play more music. We, <laughs> when we, when we go, mo most people are like, Okay, I gotta take a step back. Like, no, no, let's book more shows. <laughs> Remington climbing all the things in the show. Like, everyone's shocked he hasn't fallen. Don't curse me. <laughs> <laughs> if I fall tonight, I'm just smashing so bad. <laughs> but we fight so much as brothers as it is on the road. But it's out like you know you can love each other five minutes and then five minutes later hate the shit from each other. So it's fine. It's but it's a lot of good. it's a lot of fist fights. Just a lot of broken bottles. Now it's, it's fun. <laughs> Have you broken bones? Um, Remington broke his hand on the head. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I broke these three knuckles. So that's, they, they've never come back. <laughs> <laughs> so when I, uh, I'm doing a lot of uh, reading about what you guys have been doing, uh, a large portion of what you're being tagged as by people is, is very big on fashion. Mm -hmm. Do you plan to... So I'm wearing a velvet shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and this is my just morning afternoon. <laughs> but do you plan on, on having your own line or stuff down the road? Or absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yes, absolutely. Smashing up his day looks like a picture of Liberace and a bear. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good look. Harry Liberace. <laughs> Pretty good. Yeah, exactly. Uh, your own line of makeup too? Yeah, it's that's actually it's kind of crazy. We we never intended to have our own makeup line, but me and Emerson just like. We ourselves could never find like the, the colors that we wanted for like our stage makeup. So like, oh, let's just like make one, and then we're like, wow, let's just sell it. And then it turns out it sells a lot more, it makes more money than music, which is funny. <laughs> <laughs> merch. We're yeah, no, it, it, that was the only way we paid for tour. It was out of uh, kind of necessity of no one was paying for us from the label standpoint. So we were just so you know, we you're getting decided. paid opening up for bands, and you're getting paid like. We were getting paid like zero dollars when we did the Andy Black tour in here. We got paid like a hundred dollars for the Sleeping Sirens tour, and you don't get paid when you open. So you had to figure out how to pay for gas. So we would do VIPs in our trailer, as some of you probably have been there, and it's weird. But we're like, hey guys, we're doing VIP, but it's in our it's trailer. Like, come to the creepy van. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, don't worry, just we're just gonna lock the doors. <laughs> but honestly, it was without our fans, like that was the only reason we were able to continue to stay on the road. Because you know the label support never really was there when it came to that point of wanting to help build the band, and it was our fans built our band. Yeah. So we were running out of money, and then we just decided to be Kylie Jenner and make a makeup line. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it has enabled you guys to keep going. That's yeah, it. Exactly. We were able to make records. We were yeah. able to make our own our own decisions. Yeah, Otherwise, we, we, we could afford plane people. tickets to go overseas yeah. and then, you know try out now start making this band. It's like, so the, the, the question is, you're talking about like how hard of a struggle it is with the, with the notoriety you guys have already. You're not living in a Hollywood Hills mansion. I live right here right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I, I get it. I, I don't. We, I live in. I live on a bus for the past three or have in a van. We were in our mom's car for a year and a half. Yeah. And then we did a, a van for like a year, and then we just now the finally got to in our mom's car is because he broke it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the transmission blew four times. That. It's not fun. So now, now you're consistently on the road and... Yeah. It's crazy, we started touring internationally. Like Canada was the first place that actually like made us feel like, oh, this band's actually working. Because in the States, it takes a lot longer. And now in the States, like everything's been sold out on the American tour, which has been great, but the rooms are definitely not anywhere near the sizes that we're playing in Europe. And in Canada, it's like, you know, we're doing the Opera House, and our last show we did Mod Club, and the show before that Sneaky D's. So we've only played three headline shows in Toronto ever, yeah. and to see that has been really, really exciting for us. You know, in the States we played San Antonio, Texas 12,000 times, and it's, you know, now it's finally happening, but you guys just embrace it. So much next show is going to be Tyler Ray Alden and Rogers. Okay, that could happen. <laughs> Um, how uh, how much of a boost to the band's career did uh, the soundtrack for uh, American Satan help you, or did it hurt anyone? Anyway? I, I think it, it was strange because Remington did all the vocals for that whole entire movie, and there was no credit towards him. You could, unless you actually knew his voice, you wouldn't know it was him. Yeah. So that was kind of a it weird. Did, it did. It did help it did a lot, help, which yeah. was really cool. And uh, I just I just did all the vocals about a month ago. 
before um, it turned into a television show. So I just did all the vocals for that. So it's weird because, like, you know, we grew up, you know, I grew up knowing about, like, Andy Black and, you know, Black Belt Rides and everything. And it's funny, we, like, opened, opened for him. And now he spends his acting career with singing to me. It's fucking wild. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you supplied the soundtrack. Yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy because I'm like, he's already, like, such a, such a famous band. Crazy opportunity, so it definitely helped our career a lot. But um, yeah, we we're excited for the future. Cool. Anybody in the audience got a question they want to ask? Go ahead. I'm Are you feeling better? <laughs> 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 no problem. <laughs> tattoos and then we realized people started getting them and then there was like we're like oh and there's a lot of parents mad about it because they're doing like, they're doing like sh poking sticks musically when you guys first started? Um, our mom was really good with giving us actually really good music when we were growing up. It was, we were really into, like our first introduction to music was like T-Rex and mm -hmm. Bowie and the Stones and the Faces and Emerson. I don't know why she bought you a Super Tramp record when you were Super Tramp. <laughs> For me it was, um, when I listened to the Velvet Underground, I kind of learned about that whole ideology and um, artistic thing. 
Yeah. Um, but it was when I heard Piper at the Gates of Dawn by Pink Floyd, the first okay. album, and then I got into like Sid Barrett and then like the Stooges and Thirteen Floor Elevator. Mm. I love just like that kind of dirty second. Yeah. Album. And I, I've always loved. I've, I've leaned to a different kind of side of rock. Um, I've always loved Michael Cormance. You know, yeah. Yes.